This is Keepsakes, the podcast. I'm Jay Ogonoy. This is episode 57 of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Jay Ogonoy with Keepsakes right here at UP College of Law for iBlog 15, the 15th Philippine Blogging Summit, which is perhaps the final iBlog that we will be attending to. Uh, before I remind you, uh, no, this is a special feature because it's really a throwback to everything that has happened to me in the past decade as well. Uh, aside from celebrating the 15th iBlog, I also celebrate 10 years of me being involved in cosplay communities. So maybe, maybe to celebrate this milestone, I have with me a frequent guest, on, uh, on a frequent visitor, uh, delegate, attendee, what, whatever you may call it of iBlog and uh, I also have your I believe you're the same I don't know parati ka po pa ta na iBlog no? yes, yes. alright ladies and gentlemen first on the list JC John Seseconeta hi I'm JC uh, I first attended iBlog uh, 15 years ago and here I am in the in its final uh, uh, summit yak na ako yak na ako <laughs> and Yes, it's a very sad day for us since uh, we will no longer have uh, any iBlogs in the future. And it was fun. And also with me is, yun nga, sinabi ko nga, he's a legend- legendary man. <laughs> Legend among legends. Uh, he's currently with the Fintech Philippines Association. Disclaimer, I'm part of the Fintech uh, Alliance PH Secretariat. Na rin, ano. Pero, uh, this one from the Fintech Philippines Association, Mr. Mike Abundo. Hey, Jay. Thanks for the interview. Thanks for having me on your show, and uh, thanks for coming to iBlog. It's uh, as JC said, it is a, uh, it is it is a bittersweet moment out here. Yeah. You know, the the scene is changing. We're going from sp- just blogging to general content creation, so we're really in transition here. So, kasi ng anila sa panel earlier sa closing statement sila, I think iBlog shouldn't be called iBlog anymore. Blogging is quote unquote dead. But it's uh, it's alive, it's alive, pretty much alive. Because uh, take it from me, I just restarted. Uh, I just went back to actual blogging. Because, di ba, medium, medium was a trend for me eh. mm. until just recently, balik WordPress. So yeah, how did iBlog change you? Let's start with Mike. How did iBlog change you? <laughs> well, it changed me in many ways. I was here for the first one. Uh, been to a bunch of them. Changed me in the sense that. It showed me the possibilities of Web 2.0. It showed me, the, you know, blogging really was the beginning of social media. Um, you know, before the rise of popular social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, before that, MySpace, before that, Friendster. Um, I don't know, MySpace, Friendster, I forget which one came first, but. I think MySpace came first. You think MySpace came first? Yeah, then, then Friendster. Then yeah, Friendster. in the Philippines, it was Friendster though. But yeah, Friendster. Yeah, Friendster, Friendster gained popularity Friendster. first. That's yes. true. That's yes. true. Yeah. Yes. But bef- MySpace didn't really realize its potential in the Philippines. Yeah, I, I had a MySpace profile before. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I remember that as well. Um, yeah, blogging was the first popular decentralized form of online media. Mm. I mean, right now. Yeah, fa- Facebook has brought social media to masses, but it has a degree of centralization. Same with YouTube. YouTube brought uh, vid- self-expression via video to the masses. But again, with a degree of uh, centralization. Blogging, in its original form, was people build it, people reverse chronologically posting updates on their own sites, on their own online properties. This was truly decentralized social media, and uh, it sparked everything. It uh, it sparked the changes we see in media in general today. Because of blogging, broadcast you know uh, broadcast media had to adapt. There was no longer one sort one or several sources of truth. Uh, media was no longer an oligarchy. Well, arguably it still is, but now less so. And it's because of the things iBlog promoted. And uh, yeah, I was privileged to see some, to hear some of these ideas as they first hit the Philippines. And uh, they've really changed the way I look at the uh, media and humanity in general. And they prepared me for 
a psychological shock of Web 3.0, to be honest. 3.0. So, yeah. Web, 3.0, so Web 3.0 is, diba, Web 2.0 is more on widgets, open social, and now Web, uh, we, uh, what is Web 3.0 now? Blockchain. Tama? It's Tama. a big part of it, yeah. Okay. So, yung, yung ano, no, uh, moving, uh, moving to another topic related to iBlog, kasi, again, you're one of the frequent visitors, delegates, attendees, whatever we, we may call it, ng iBlog. And then there's this, si Mr. Vader. Mm. Si, I forgot Kel. this. Uh, si Kel, Kel Fabi. Kel Fabi. Kel Fabi. And then there's, uh, no, and, uh, there was this time na napapaligsahan kayong dalawa sa attendance record. Eh. <laughs> I remember, I remember, yeah. Kel's, Kel's an awesome guy. Kel's a real pillar of the community. And uh, yeah, we, we did compete on attendance records around here. So, very active guy. He's been active in many communities. I've seen him not just in the blogging community, but also in the cosplay community, in the magic community, in the otaku community in general. Yeah, big contributor, that guy. I think we should all con- compete to contribute. That's what I think we should do. Mm. All right, so JC, uh, on to you. So what is the most memorable lesson you've learned in... How many years have you been attending to iBlog before? Yeah, late, I know. Probably seven years. For seven years, ano yung pinaka-natotunan mong lesson? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, well... I think uh, I can say that I learned uh, uh, how to mingle since uh, I'm an introvert uh, person. So I kind of uh, keep to myself and enjoy enjoy uh, enjoy traveling and, 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 and alone. So through I blog, I met uh, other bloggers, other writers, other content creators, as we call it today, uh, called the. Uh, industry today so uh, it's the biggest lesson for me uh, that it's it is important to get to know uh, the other people in your niche and in your community to get in touch with them and to know and to share so yeah uh, other than that I would say that knowing WordPress is superior over the other platforms because uh, prior prior to using WordPress, I was using Blogger. two different two other different. <laughs> Tumblr, uh, Tumblr, Blogger, Tumblr. No, uh, some Live Journal, Sangha. Uh, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, it's the other fork of uh, word uh, of the original WordPress. Uh, it it started as B two. B two, yeah. And then it forked into two uh, uh, two branches. So one is WordPress, and the other one is I, I don't want to mention them since I'm still uh, part of the community. <laughs> but of course, uh, and it it would be unfair for them since I haven't tried the plat the latest version of uh, of the of the other platform. So I so far uh, through I blog through meeting with the uh, meet uh, with the community. They convinced me to transfer to WordPress. So that's the other lesson I learned. And I would say that it was a very good decision that I transferred to WordPress. Then, of course, there's, there's these uh, uh, insights on monetization. Because uh, when uh, blogging was starting back 15 years ago, monetization was just another, like, uh, it's more of a journalist thing uh, which which we know uh, it's not exactly uh, how it should have been uh, viewed back then because monetization it should be part of your plan you cannot uh, you cannot continue something uh, you cannot continue doing something if you don't ha- if, if you're not getting anything from it be it in uh, monetary value or say network or uh, even goods. So that's the other thing. And lastly, of course, trans- transparency. So it's, it is very important, uh, especially in blogging. We need to be very transparent in our dealings and uh, partnerships and even advertisements. Since uh, uh, whenever we promote something, uh, we're putting our reputation at stake and the trust that the readers gave us so we need to be transparent about that and this is something that there are still bloggers who are not that transparent and then later we're 
we are going to find out that it was a paid post and then they praised the product so high and yet the product failed. There, there, there are still cases like that. So those are the four things that I learned from my blog. And I believe every blogger or any, or any content creator, regardless of, plat, of the platform or channel you are using, should learn those four things. Okay, okay so how about you, Mike? Give me three. I'm sorry? Give me three. Three lessons three from lessons? my blog. Well, the first lesson would be uh, there are no sacred cows in tech. Blogging is, it may have been the first form of individual decentralized online expression, but now we've seen the rise of vloggers, we've seen the rise of social media on centralized platforms, we've seen, uh, we've seen micro blogging, we've seen, and for out of that, micro influencers, every, every technology evolves and diversifies. And the moment you marry yourself to one iteration of a technology, you're finished. So in, so, so in other words, so in other words, you're saying to me that there's no one platform. There's no one platform in any field of technology. I mean, I look at, I look at the, I look at blockchain technology right now. There are still people who believe Bitcoin should be the only thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Believe it or not, they're called the maximalists, toxic maximalists. Ugh. Anyway, um, I've been I've been to the early i blogs, and I remember when people said that decentralized social media should be the only social media, that it should be something you own, on a server you own, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, uh, there 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 are people who would even, I remember there are just a, there are a few people who would even cite the advantage of a dedicated server over shared hosting, which is you know. God, that's just plumbing, okay? You cannot be married to one iteration of a technology. You cannot be married to one way of doing things. It's true in technology. It's true in... Uh, Jay, you've you observed the cosplay scene a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, are, there, are, there are craftsmanship maximalists who say the only real cosplay is if you crafted the contact lenses by hand, right? Even, even people say that. Huh? Do it. I'm exaggerating, but there are Mike, no. <laughs> maximalists, right? Oh, yes, I yeah, understood that, yung Cloth versus armor and all that. But yeah. that's the different. Uh, ba, ba balik tayo sa blog, no? But I, got, I get your point. Uh, on this, yeah, uh, siguro that's the only less, uh, aside, aside there's from. More, there's more. There's more, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's the first lesson. There are no sacred cows in technology. Second lesson would be um, technologies live and die on communities. They live and die on communities. And I'm not just talking about communities of users. I'm talking about communities of stakeholders in general. I'm talking the corporations. I'm talking the platform owners. I'm talking the regulators. Okay? By community, I mean the entire ecosystem. You can't... You can't... Uh, JC, with a, I'm a WordPress fan, but... Uh, you can't worship any one technology. You can't say that... Oh, the, the flexibility of WordPress will win over all social media. I mean, yes, a large percentage of the web websites on, of sites on the web today are on WordPress, but a large percentage of the human population is on Facebook, all right? You gotta look, you can't just look at the technology, you can't look at technology in isolation. You need to look at the communities supporting them, the wider communities supporting them. And uh, you can't have these, uh, while the tension between, tension between different parts of an ecosystem is fine. I mean, the tension between users and corporations should exist. The tensions between consumers and, consumers and corporations and regulators should exist. Th th this conversation must go on, but you can't take one side here. Uh, you can't, you can't, you can't take your, you can't look at your technology in isolation and you cannot look at your technology in conjunction with just one part of the community. You need to take a, as tired as this word is, you need to take a holistic approach. You need to take a look at all the stakeholders. There's a book called, uh, if, you, if you've read New Power, no, no, that, that, it's a great book. Um, it's about how power is now distributed between, I believe it's a, it's a trifecta of platform owners, Platform owners, 
users. Is something, yeah. The, the, actually, there's this part of that. It's like a triangle structure. First the part owners, of the triangle, those who handle the, the, the pl platform owners, platform owners the, people, the users, the power users, users yeah. The generate, who generate content. And the, the, the uh, there, there's, the, there's the, users, the users of the content and the... Uh, consumers of the content. Consumers of the content and creators of the content. Mm. Yeah, so platform holder, creator, and user. This and around them is the crowd. This 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 isn't just in blogging. If you look at transport networks, platform holder, platform owner, Grab, Uber, Gojek, um, content quote unquote creator, the drivers, the drivers. users, Us. the riders, commuters. commuters, the community in general, the crowd. That's a great model, I think, for stakeholders. You need to look at your community in terms of all the stakeholders. Technology without community dies. I mean, we were just talking about how XFN, uh, X XML Friends Network. XML Friends Network, right, right, right. Um, it was an attempt to create a decentralized form of social networking for individual web properties. One of the reasons it failed was because it failed to take into account the panoply of possible uh, human relationships. If you look at XFN, for instance, the only tag for romantic relationships of any kind is rel equals sweetheart. That's it. <laughs> I mean, there are more forms of romantic relationship than sweetheart. I think we know this. We're nerds, but we know this, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you need to take into account every relationship between all your stakeholders. Or your technology dies. That's why we're not using XFN right now. Sorry, we're on Facebook. We're using, about, uh, we're using Facebook. So I guess uh, we'll take a quick break. I'll just mention uh, yeah. the activities that I will be going yes, to. Yeah. Right. So this is, again, episode 57. Yeah. Again, I uh, really appreciate that you've come this far. Next episode, I will be featuring Coslandia, which was uh, has been held uh, last November 1 to 3 at SMXora. But on the following week after iBlog, there's this event called Arcon, one of the biggest events in Cebu. I will be flying to Cebu wow. on that uh, weekend, and uh, we'll see each other there. And also the uh, cosplay weekend, the big cosplay weekend, the end of the year cosplay weekend, Ozin Fest Anime Figure Special, and Cosplay Matsuri. Uh, these are coming in uh, December. Uh, I'm not sure about events in November yet, but I have to check my calendar. Pero babalikan ko kayo in the next episode. But yeah, my focus next week is Arcon 2019. And uh, awesome. plug in, ko, plug in ko lang ano. Before Arcon, before I fly to Cebu, we have an event called the Customer Experience Management Conference, Customer Love Fest, in which customer experience, loyalty and rewards, CX and CRM are gathered into one. One of our uh, one of our speakers is from Paymaya. Mm, cool. So maybe you want to maybe you want to join. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's on November 14 and 15 at Tower Club Makati. And uh, if you want to if you're interested with this, uh kung may nasagi man tayo dito na listener any anyone, uh, you can just call Mondays to Fridays from 9:30 to 6. 8633-0153 That's 8633-0153 And yeah, that's CosmerLoveFest.com Keepsakes So yeah, uh, I think that's about it for my break Let's get back to iBlog And I'll share my experience Because uh, having been into two talks Having talked to the iBlog, at the iBlog podium twice Ang isa sa mga natutunan ko Is that there's content uh, There's ways to share beyond the blog That's my second talk And there's uh, that's a, and of course, before the post-truth era happened, the post-truth era, the right? post-truth era, we have this, parang di ba mga billboard sites. Uh, let's say, let's say di ba, for example, post on PR. One of the lessons that I learned on iBlogs, you don't post similar content. Penalize mm -hmm. ni Google. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the shortest that I can ano. Pero the long the long tail of it, the how I understand it from that to that to that point. How did I came to that conclusion? Is a story that also has been brought in iBlog7. Uh, I was introduced to a gig uh, from a certain bank. I think I went on to before in my latest post about blogging. And uh, I got the material, I pasted it there sa blog ko. So it's like, uh, tinawagan ako ng uh, uh, nag-invite sa akin, uh, take, down na po, take down the post. Because it's duplicate content, basically. They want me to create my own content because uh, authenticity, uniqueness, 
is a thing. So, in-apply ko yung, uh, aside from other things, for example, mga, for example, mga news websites on our niche, they post press releases from overseas. Some may be relevant, some may not be relevant in the Philippine context, pero uh, sila yung unang target ko talaga ng unang talk ko, which is avoiding information redundancy, uh, in which it doesn't apply at, ano, I, I realize na it may not apply at all. Kasi information redundancy, aka copy-pasting your posts, PRs, and all that, it happens in the blogging community, but they are an industry website. Kasi, let's say for that, uh, specific niche. Uh, mga friends ko ito. So, yeah, na- nabanggit ko lang because this is learning experience. And yes, uh, going back to my second doc, Sharing Beyond Your Blog. This is why I have a podcast. This is why Keepsakes is a multimedia project, solo project. Still solo project na consists of a blog, a podcast, and a video channel on YouTube and Facebook. So, yeah, uh, that's how I explore things. And so far, yun yung mga... Yun yung pinakatatatandaan ko when I go at an iBlog. And 10 years... Uh, 15, 15 years and honest 15 years ngayon ko lang nare-realize yung monetization uh, siguro it's part of marketing talaga uh, which conclu- uh, which lets me conclude that marketing is an underappreciated career underappreciated underestimated maybe but it's underappreciated and again there's this uh, if I'm I, I don't know if I mentioned this to both of you no? there's this uh, private sector initiative to professionalize, to have a certification for the marketing. There's this called this thing is called registered marketing professional, and another one is the certified marketing professional. The RMP exam is happening at this, as we speak, sa AIM Makati. Uh, it's with the Junior Achievement Philippines, and uh, the CPM is with the Philippine Marketing Association. In other words, uh, if you if you started in blogging, there are other careers that you can explore. Ito nga, I'm exploring multimedia project. I'm exploring uh, on its on its first year as I move back to WordPress. In expert ko kung how I can collaborate with brands and all that. So yeah, uh, good times, good times. Uh, it it took me a long time to figure this out, pero really something exciting ano. Uh, Ayun. So, yeah, um, what I miss about iBlog is it's the reason why I always go to UP Diliman. It's the reason. There's no other reason. Except for if I was invited into concert. UP Ami nga, hindi ko nga mapuntaan kasi it's on a weekday. Eh. And I have work on weekdays. I have school on weekdays. So, iBlog is the reason why I'm coming here even for one day. One Saturday. Ngayon, half day na lang talaga siya. Eh. It's basically... Uh, talagang finale na talaga which is kind of sad kasi all these connections all these lessons learned all these uh, uh, here's a story here's a, here's a cool story my boss actually know me before I entered the company that I'm into because of iBlog he's attending iBlog uh, yeah my boss Orly Balesteros yeah, if, you, if you're familiar with him. Part siya dati ng Filipino Bloggers Forward. Well, as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, small world. Ika nga. Small, really small world. So, dito. Dito ko nakilala ng mga katulad ni Florencio Husay, ni Mac Richard Paglika, uh, Paglinawan, Paglikawan ng Lionheart TV, Daily Pidya. Dito ko nakilala ng mga katulad ni, ni si Alwin. Si Alwin ng, uh, ano, si Alwin Aguirre ng uh, City Romer. Kasi ito Romer. Mike Cabundo, of course. Uh, dati, mikeabundo.com lang ito eh. Now it's with the Fintech Philippines Association propagating Fintech eh. Thank you. With the, the other I'm, guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yeah, the other guys. Pero ako, personally, I'm into cashless payments. Gcash. Uh, Gcash is, well, of course, dropping names. Gcash best girl. <laughs> Ayan, uh. So, yun nga. Um, really, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing na I can get in touch with all of you guys. Really happy na I was able to spare my time kahit pa no, to go here sa iBlog. Uh, really, I have no other words to say but thank you iBlog. Thank you, my gratitude talaga for allowing me to be part of this. Uh, not just as a visitor, a delegate, but also a speaker twice. And ilan lang talaga yung mga nag 
mga na bibigyan ng chance to open up themselves at iBlog. And I'm really happy uh, uh, Ms. Janet Toral, Attorney J.J. Zini, UP College of Law. And, uh, siguro yun yung parting words ko na. Any final words from you, JC? Uh, May rapat ka rin, no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I think I'll just uh, add a comment or two uh, regarding uh, copy-pasting content. So, I think uh, when it comes to PR or press releases, uh, sometimes uh, the, you really have to just copy-paste because, uh, let's say, for example, uh, they provided no other information other than what's in their uh, press release. So, of course, if the, if the product or, or for example, uh, in my uh, gaming blog, uh, they they send the uh, press releases and then they, do, they don't provide any other information or product info about the games that they want me to write about. So, since there, there's not much uh, I can work on and since the game is new, usually, I just copy paste the press release uh, they sent me. Mm. So there are times that you really have to do that. But if you can write or rewrite their press release to create your own content and to add your own touch, do that. You can always do that. It, it is actually uh, expected by the uh, marketing department of the different companies the the receiver or the recipient of their press releases will rewrite uh, their content hmm. so for example uh, uh, since I work I, I used to work in uh, some local gaming companies before and I also handled some clients international clients so I usually write the uh, I usually prepare the press release uh, content images and then I send it to the uh, our contacts so of course uh, there's also there are cases where I'm since I have my own blog I also send it to my own email and since I already wrote I'm the one who wrote it so I just copy paste it so it's very it's it's a little bit hard to rewrite your own uh, press release so I think I so that I think that's my uh, additional uh, comment about uh, it's fine, but yes, it is true. You will be penalized, so you really, really have to balance it out. So uh, also, I you mentioned another thing, uh, about but I but I can remember. <laughs> but yeah, so I think I'll end with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Let's give the mic to Mike. Thanks, Jay, and thanks for having us on your show. I like that uh, point you made about us living, uh, about, well, I'd like to address a couple of points you made, actually. First off, uh, you mentioned the duplicate content used to be a big problem, not so much anymore. I'm thinking it'll become less and less of a problem through two, through two methods. One is through artificial intelligence being able to much better determine the canonicity of content. I'm sure Google's got a bunch of uh, data scientists working on that, a bunch of AI experts working on that. Um, and uh, another emerging um, another emerging technology that could address that problem is uh, blockchain technology because there can be only one version of a truth of the truth on a blockchain on any given blockchain. So you know, if you can use a blockchain to record land titles, I'm sure you could use it to record the authenticity of content. I'm sure there are experiments about that, experiments in that direction right now. Just can't name them off the top of my head. Um, but there are social media platforms that leverage blockchain technology like Scent and Steemit. So yeah, AI and blockchain technology, artificial intelligence blockchain technology, I think will make duplicate content less of a problem and uh, you know, make abundance less of a problem and more of a boon because as a marketer, you do want your content everywhere, right? Like you're doing right now. You have a blog, you have a podcast, you got it everywhere. And I think technology will catch up to the human urge to see, to put their word out everywhere. Technology has to adapt to humanity, not the other way around. Second thing is what you said about the post-truth society. This is again something I think where blockchain can, technology can help. To quote Edward Snowden, and I know, I know I'm going to murder his quote, so I'm just going to paraphrase it. Um, 
in an age where everything is bullshit, the ability to... Um, I can say that on your podcast, right? The ability to agree on one version of the truth is a breakthrough technology and that's blockchain technology you can I, I, I can't remember the exact Snowden quote but you know search for Snowden quote blockchain truth bullshit I'm sure you'll find something um, okay your third point you'll be attending Archcon yeah Archcon Cebu Archcon nice. right I want to give a shout out to uh, Miles Semblante and all the nice. good work she's doing out there right I mean she's really pushing the pushing the cosplay community out there you know, I've been watching her work on social media, how she's promoting Cebu, you know, as a, as a, as a capital, as, as one of the country's capitals of cosplay creativity. And I really admire the work she's doing there. Just so shout out to Miles, you know, have fun at ArchCon, spread the word down there and, uh, you know, show us Malilenos what Cebu can do. Because I've been to Cebu, I've been to one of their cosplay conventions, I've been to one that was hosted by Miles and Jessica Oano as well. <laughs> And they do amazing work out there. So, guys, if you're in Cebu, when is ArchCon again? Next week. Next week. If you're in Cebu next week, go check out ArchCon, all right? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's. Uh, th thank you for raising all those points, Jen. Thank you for having us on your show. Yeah, and speaking of which, if you know Mais, Mais, at that, uh, ilang taon na, of course, you'll know, you'll know, hagano katagal si Mais don, mm -hmm. sa ano, si, hagano siya katagal sa Cosmic Committee. Thank you very much, Mike Abundo, and JC Dan sa Seconeta. So yeah, that's that's it. That's a wrap. And so long, I blog. Until next time. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> and, until <laughs> until it's the content creators convention or something. Okay. Thank, thank you for cutting me out. I was about to uh, I was about to shed tears. Or <laughs> fintech con. Fintech con. <laughs> look, okay. That's another point I want to address. Okay. Uh, um, Mike, 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 you're really propagating. You're really doubling down on no, this it's not, fintech. It's not about the fintech thing. All right. I mean. We got to, like I said, we got to look at things holistically. Uh, Web 2.0 was all about media tech and martech, right? Giving everyone a voice, giving everyone the ability to sell something or, or say something or sell something, and um, reaching previously unreachable audiences, you know, with whatever passions you have. I think Web 3.0 will be about monetizing the unmonetizable. Um, value for value. Value for value. value, for value. Ex exactly, exactly. I think marketing and media, te Martech, media tech, you know, you can lump them under. Can we lump Martech and media tech under just Martech? What do you guys think? It's marketing. <laughs> marketing. But it's, it's different because it's both technology. But yeah, yeah, marketing, I think. Marketing. I like the sound. I think marketing, market Martech is more on yun nga, customer experience, uh, right. integration with uh, CX, right. something like that. And it's, uh, you know, most of media is funded by marketing, right? Yeah, so uh, just to generalize, MarTech will let us market what was previously unmarketable or reach audiences that were previously unreachable. And FinTech will let us monetize passions that were previously unmonetizable and monetize audiences that were previously unmonetizable. I think that the future of uh, God, I'm going to use an Elodia line here. The future of enabling people to do what they love will require us to market to reach audiences that were previously unreachable and monetize audiences that were previously unmonetizable. And I think moving forward, that will require a combination of marketing technology, Martech, and financial technology, fintech. So I don't think it'll be a fintech con. I think it'll be. I'm hoping it'll be something more holistic, something that takes into account every stakeholder in this ecosystem. That wraps up another episode of Keepsakes, the podcast. No episodes can be heard at anchor.fm slash keepsakes, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Leave your voice messages to this podcast through the Anchor app available on Google Play and App Store. Don't forget to visit me on social media for updates. Facebook.com slash Keepsakes by Jay, Twitter at Jayagonoy, YouTube.com slash Jayagonoy, and my blog at www.jayagonoy.xyz. Shout out to Lee Rosie Bear for the music. I hope you enjoyed listening to this podcast. Until next time.